Hello, good morning. It's 8 a.m. here in Boston. Um, today, uh, I'm going to present with my colleague, Jay Looper. Uh, I work for the Harvard Division of Continuing Education. And we are going to present how we are indexing transcripts to facilitate searching. Um, so the question is, why not indexing transcripts? Uh, all our recordings uh, have transcripts generated. We use uh, IBM Watson to generate automated transcripts. We also, for, the, for a small percentage of the courses, we use um, a human um, generated transcript uh, called Triple uh, So we have uh, all that already there, right? So adding the ability to search transcripts uh, helps uh, students when they are reviewing materials to study uh, and also instructors when, when they are looking at their old uh, courses to prepare for the next semester. Um, so here is our user interface. Um, this is embedded in Canvas. It's our video listing tool. Uh, for a course, we list all the recordings in a course. And at the top, we have a search bar um, here. Um, so um, our search uh, capability is very, uh, very simple. Uh, you can search by any of the words or, or the exact phrase in quotes. Um, and also uh, you can search only uh, within a course. We are not doing searching across uh, courses. Um, so you can type a word here or many words and click on the search and we get back the recordings that where that word appeared in, in the transcripts or in the title and, and description. Um, and we list uh, all places here and all, those are links. So if you click on one of them, um, we open the player and we uh, stick to that position where that word was spoken. Uh, so um, very easy to use and very simple. Okay, um, this is our process. Uh, we have a, a production workflow that ingests and code, and at the end, after publishing, we start the automated transcripts generation. Um, when the transcripts are ready, uh, we attach to the media package and publish again. Uh, and then we call an AWS uh, Lambda function to add um, the transcripts to an Elasticsearch uh, index. Uh, and then transcripts are searchable from the video listing tool. Um, we have developed a few components to implement that. Uh, the first one is an OpenCast module, uh, which is responsible for um, the workflow operation that publishes, uh, that indexes the, the transcripts and a REST endpoint to do the search to query Elasticsearch and send back uh, results with all the occurrences of those words. Um, now I'm going to switch to Jay. He's going to talk about the AWS pieces. Can you please transfer to Jay the controls? Thank you. Um, Not sure what happened here. Jay hasn't got any audio at the moment enabled. Yeah, let me, yeah, just a bit. Hello. Yes. Yes, we can hear you again.
All right, can anybody hear me? Just give me a thumbs up. Okay, I can't hear, I have no audio. I don't know why it's not working. So I'm just gonna talk and uh, hopefully, <laughs> thank you. Ah, great. Um, okay, so sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm Jay uh, and uh, I'm a principal engineer at DCE. And for my part of this talk, I'm gonna walk through uh, some of the dirty details of how the transcript content gets turned into a searchable index. Um, so as Root mentioned earlier, I, I assume, once the transcript data is ready, whether it was whether it was auto-generated by IBM Watson or processed by a human somewhere, so OpenCast converts it to uh, a DXFP file, and that goes into an S3 bucket uh, along with the other media package files. Um, and then OpenCast invokes uh, an AWS Lambda function with that S3 URL, um, along with a few other attributes. Um, so that's what this looks like. The invocation message from OpenCast to the Lambda, it includes uh, the S3 URL for that captions file, uh, a media package ID, series ID, and the name of an Elasticsearch index that it should go into. Um, so the first thing that Lambda does is fetch the DXFP file. And if you've never seen this kind of data before, um, it's just a simple sequence of short chunks of the transcript script with uh, begin and end times. That's it. Uh, and let's see, so what happens next? Um, so the next thing that happens is that the Lambda function, the AWS Lambda function, turns that data into a searchable Elasticsearch uh, document. Uh, for indexing. So every Elasticsearch document has an ID field um, and you can let Elasticsearch make one of those IDs for you um, just randomly or you can define it yourself and we chose to create our own based on the media package ID and the series ID um, and that lets us easily update the documents like if the transcript content were to change. Um, we also add those um, me, uh, the media package and the series ID fields as separate um, fields so that we can easily search within a specific lecture or across a series. Um, and then we include the caption content twice, um, the text of the captions. So include it once as a large text field that concatenates all of the individual chunks together. Um, and then we, again, we index it again as an array of nested documents. Um, each has its own short chunk of the captions uh, and the begin time value in seconds. And why do we do that? So why do we do it twice? Um, so the point there is uh, it's the solution we came up with uh, for supporting uh, phrase search, meaning when the user encloses their search terms in quotes to indicate that they want results where those two terms occur together or multiple terms. Um, and as far as we could tell, this is not really possible if you just index the captions snippets individually, um, at least maybe not without some kind of fancy custom query analysis component that we were not really interested in, in trying to develop. Um, so in this example here, uh, a user who searches for the phrase standard definition, they're not going to get a hit. If they search for that standard definition in quotes, they're not going to get hit on this because the phrase occurs across that caption boundary. Um, so what if instead you indexed just all of the uh, caption content together, like in a big text blob? Okay, so that would solve your phrase search problem, but then you've lost your index time uh, context. So you um, Again, like you could have, you could do some sort of fancy uh, term vector payload uh, stuff at index time, uh, but again, that was another thing we were just not interested in developing at the moment if we didn't have to. Uh, so, um, so it's not it's not enough to index the text twice. Uh, so I, that's why we did it twice um, because we had to solve that that scenario. Uh, but it, you can't just index it twice. You also have to construct your query in a particular way. Um, so this is some pseudo JSON, um, hopefully that's understandable. Uh, what I'm trying to show here is, whoops, I zoomed in, what happened? Um, what I'm trying to show is that um, in the query that we send to Elasticsearch, the search terms that the user enters are um, represented twice. So once 
uh, as is with any quotes around them preserved. Uh, and then again, uh, with punctuation rem removed, just as standard uh, search tokens. And the two sets of terms um, are contained or wrapped into a Boolean query so that both of those forms of the query must match the document. Uh, and then finally, the uh, example of some a successful search. Uh, so here I switched to a different example because um, I realized too late that my initial example like wasn't from an actually accessible lecture and I didn't want to have to redo all of my slides. Um, so now we're searching for immune response in quotes and you can see that um, we did, uh, so right, so the specific scenario that we were trying to design for here, uh, it, it really is, quite a, an edge case. Um, but uh, so it was difficult to find a perfect example um, of it working as intended, but this this shows sort of good enough. If you use your imagination and you uh, ignore those first two, um, these first two uh, hits over here in the highlights, um, uh, caption highlights section, just pretend those don't exist because those are cases where the phrase actually did occur together in one of the captions. Um, but if you go down a little bit, you can see uh, we have a decrease in their immune responses in animals. So this is a case where there were two caption snippets and the phrase occurred across the boundary of those two snippets. Um, but we would still get this document because um, it occurred in, in the full concatenated blob of text. Um, and let's see. So, I mean, this turned out to be uh, a good enough solution. Um, our users are happy. Uh, we we support uh, essentially support the phrase search. Um, I think we're we're. You could probably argue that um, maybe the highlights, uh, the highlighted snippets, uh, could be done a little better with some extra work. Um, but we got a hit. We got the search results uh, because our phrase appeared in the full text. And uh, it's pretty easy uh, and intuitive for the user to, to click to that point in the video where the things that they're searching for appear. Uh, and that is it. Oh, sorry, now I'm gonna talk about, well, I'm not gonna talk about it, but I will show you quickly the AWS infrastructure here uh, for anybody who happens to care. Um, OpenCast, uh, our OpenCast instance, instances all run inside their own VPC. This transcript indexer apparatus component um, is, its, is in its own VPC. Uh, it has a single private subnet. Uh, so Elasticsearch is completely um, sort of inaccessible from the outside world. Uh, and then we use a VPC peering connection so that OpenCast can talk to it. Uh, we use an S3 VPC endpoint so that the Lambda function can pull things from S3. Um, and that's about it. If anybody has any questions about this stuff, um, you know, hit me up and thank you. I'm sorry, I can't hear anything. <laughs> thank you very much for your talk. Really quite interesting. I directly also have one question. Did you already get some feedback from students who like, okay. uh, used the search and found it more useful now? Uh, we did not like get formal feedback, but we see that it's it's been used because of log, and uh, but we did not like have formal feedback. Well, well, you can see that it's being used, so that's good to know, right? Okay, does anyone else have a question? I think we have time for one more before we have to switch to the next presentation. <coughs> Access control. Um, so we have our own way of authorizing um, students to uh, watch lectures uh, so um, we have a, a separate authorization system and um, and so we only um, 
only students um, can get to that video. So and, and to to Canvas and so like in the index to access the index, we do not do like any checks. Oh, Elasticsearch. Okay, maybe Jay can answer. Access control to Elasticsearch. Uh, is that what you are asking? So, oh, so that's what, what I, uh, so we, we do not have access control in the index, but we only, um, so they only get, can access um, videos that they are authorized. Does that answer the question? Seems to be the case. Um, if not, I suggested you to talk directly about that, given that we're on a schedule and kind of a little bit over time, but I think you're both using the same CMS, so it might be useful to get in touch 